All right. So, um, so today we're going to mainly finish the DCT and the uh, JPEG. Okay. So, just wanted to come back because um, last time we finished very quickly the the JPEG entropy uh, coding, and so I just wanted to spend a bit more time here and just. Um, come back to um, an example of how you actually code uh, 8 by 8 DCT block. So you can see the, the, the bits of the JPEG uh, with your very own eyes, okay? So, right, so I, I kind of summarized here again the, the challenges. So the challenges is what you deal with. Uh, so you have 64 subbands. So how do you deal with that? You know, how do you, in which order you do things, okay? Uh, so the, the way JPEG done that is by uh, having this zigzag pattern, okay? So this is the eight by eight uh, block you have. So you have all the coefficients ranked from the top left. So you have the DC coefficient on top and you have um, all the other ones um, aligned to the highest frequency on the, the bottom right. And so you have this zigzag pattern where you go through the frequencies. And the idea is like when you do quantization, uh, most of the elements on the bottom right are mostly zeros. So I said as well that the first element, the DC element, is treated a bit uh, differently, and that's because we've seen that with how um, the nature of the picture of the low, low pass on the, um, the, the DC components is very much different from the rest. And so for that, we use actually difference coding, okay? So we actually look at uh, the difference between two uh, blocks in a row. Okay, so you look at the DC coefficient from one block to the next, and we do, dif do, we do the difference. All right, so the two main things here. The last point I made as well was that, um, coming back here, that yes, we could use Huffman coding for um, that. I think actually JPEG allows you to do that, to define your own tables, uh, but uh, it takes space to uh, actually define the tables. So that's because you actually have a lot more symbols than you had originally. Uh, so therefore, um, JPEG has some kind of built-in um, definition of what this coding could be, okay? And the coding really uh, worked this way. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of the same for both DC and AC. Uh, so you have two parameters, if you want, one that tells you the size, okay? So on the right, so this is for the DC value. So on the right-hand side, you have the actual number you want to code, okay? So going from minus 2,000, uh, to plus 2,000, and uh, it ranks them depending on kind of their frequency, if you want, okay? And so for the most frequent one, so say minus one and one, you only use um, either zero or one bit, okay? And, um, and you keep on going like that. So the, basically the bigger the number is, the most unlikely it is, and therefore the more bits you use to define it, all right? So you have, kind of two, two things, one uh, number that will say what the size of your, uh, or the category of your, of your number, so what the, what the magnitude of it, and then the other part would be the actual coding within that category, all right? Um, so I just wanted to go through um, some example of that. I don't know how you come back. All right. So this is um, this is uh, an example, and um, all right. So on top here you have the um, the coding scheme that is um, given to you again. Uh, that's for the uh, AC codes, and. Here you have your example of uh, eight by eight block uh, after quantization, okay? <coughs> now, remember here, um, uh, this is a subtle point, but in the, in the quantization, you, you have, you, you have the, the formula is a Q step times round of your number divided by Q step, okay? Uh, so in JPEG, actually, you don't multiply by the, the first time by the Q step because you actually know what it is. So when you encode it, you actually don't, um, don't specify it, uh, so most of the, the numbers are quite small, okay? So you have more numbers that are ones and twos and threes and so on, okay? So you don't actually see 
Um, so when you see more, minus one here, that really means minus Q step for that particular bound. Does it make sense? All right, so the, the formula here is the rounding of the number you had divided by Q step, and that's it, okay? So to get back to the original formula, you have to actually multiply by Q step to when you decode it, okay? So yeah, that's, that's your block, and that's typical of what you get in, uh, in, 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 in JPEG. So most here, you have mostly zeros everywhere here. Uh, you only have a few uh, non-zero elements, and most of the signal is really concentrated in that top left corner, so for the lowest of the frequencies. So the, the, the first number you have here is minus 13, and minus 13 is the DC coefficient, okay? Now remember, this DC coefficient, this minus 13, really what it means is the difference between the, pre the previous block value and the current block value, all right? So what you encode is not the actual DC coefficient. When you encode is the difference between the two blocks, all right? So you have the two consecutive blocks and you do take the difference and the difference gives you minus 13. And so what you will encode is this minus 13. Does it make sense? All right. So the rest of the coefficients are you quantized AC coefficients, so there's no problem there. So if we use the, the built-in um, entropy coding schemes uh, that is given by, um, by JPEG, this is how it works, okay? So, uh, sorry, what happened? Right. So the first number we have is minus 13. And in brackets here, what we say, we, we put is um, the category of that number, if you want the size of that number for the uh, DC band, okay? And when you look at uh, you know what, I, I, it might be easier for me to switch between, sorry. Right. So, the two here, so I have the same here, all right? Okay, so the first one we're looking at is um, minus 13, okay, so we can do to look at the block in the zigzag pattern as we discussed, okay? So we looked at minus 13, minus 13 is the difference between these two blocks. Minus 13, when I want to encode that, I look back at the table I have for the DC uh, categories, and I see, okay, so minus 13 is uh, this block here, okay? So the value is between, in this band here. And so therefore, the category is four, okay? And so, when I want to encode it, I'm going to look and say, well, this is a category four, and category four, there's a table for that as well, how you encode it, and so four is encoded as the bit stream 101. And minus 13 in that category four is encoded as 0010, okay? So you just have these lookup tables you can look, or you, you can use, okay? So basically 13 with this little formula, in two steps, okay, uh, gives you uh, this um, seven bit representation, okay? So minus 13 is included as 101.0010, okay? And the fact that we do it in two steps is because there's this scale or the magnitude of the coefficient itself, uh, which are the first bits here and then the, 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 the other bits are the indexed within that category. Then we do the proper AC, um, um, coefficient, okay? And uh, if you look back at the slides, how we do that, okay? So if you look at the slides on how we do the AC coefficients, there is this thing here, so where we look at uh, the number of consecutive zeros we see, and then the next element here is the size of um, the, um, of the AC coefficient that, that is not zero, okay? So 
Basically, what we expect is to see a bunch of zeros coming in, and then we have an, a non-zero element. So what we say is say we count the number of zeros we have, and then we look at this non-zero element, we compute this category, if you want, and then we're going to put the value as we did for the DC coefficient. So the next number to come in in the zigzag pattern will be uh, minus three. And so minus three, so there's, there's no zero element, okay? So you have zero uh, lengths of uh, zeros. And then you have minus three. And minus three is of category two because it's a quite a small number. So if you look back at the table here, um, <coughs> so if you look, yeah, so if you look back at the category levels, I looked at um, for the DC. All right, so you can see minus three is in this category, okay? So that's category two, okay? So minus three is here, and that's category two. So we said zero, two, okay? And zero, two, we have some kind of further coding here. We know that this pair, this symbol, so uh, zero, two is uh, reads here, okay? And that's uh, given by, um, by this, um, this code word here. So you say zero, one. All right, and then you encode what my zero, three is here, which is zero, zero. It's a lot of things, okay? Uh, but basically, you, you go through the zigzag pattern. Then you go through like this, okay? And the, you have to do something special for the DC coefficient here, which is done by differential coding and so on. And then the first step to do is to count the number of zeros you have in your sequence. Okay, so here I didn't have zero, so that, that was, I just said zero. And then I looked at the size of the coefficient to come, and I see that's two. And this pair is zero, two, so this pair of number of zeros and the magnitude of the next coefficient, I put that as a symbol, which I can encode separately here, and I have a lookup table for that. And then I look within that category of what is minus three in that category, and I say its index is zero, zero. And then I move on, okay? So the next one is six, so I don't have any zeros, so it's uh, zero, and the category for six is three, and then the encoding for that would be one, one, zero, and uh, the encoding for zero, three as a pair would be 100. And you move on, okay? So here you have, um, probably. okay, so here you have two zeros to come and a two. So two zeros to come means here you have two zeros to come and then I have the number two and number two is of category two, which I say two, and then I code that as uh, one zero for the index in that category and so on and so forth, okay? All right, so all these subsequent numbers are coded the same way. But then you see this kind of funny character, Z, uh, ZRL, okay? Um, sorry, if you can see that here, ZRL. Uh, so ZRL is um, basically um, a, a symbol that means you have 16 zeros to come. Okay, so just say here you have plenty of zeros to come, so you just encode that as one symbol. And that's because uh, from uh, minus one to one, you have one, two, three, four, five, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Oh, sorry. Anyway, I missed. Yeah, sixteen zero to come. Okay. And then you finish with one and one. So that this guy here, um, this one is the last symbol of your block because after you only have zeros, so you insert a symbol called end of block, and this symbol which just tells you that you finished decoding here. There's nothing after that. All right, so looking back, your bit stream is actually not that big um, because here you had 64 integer values 
and the, the value range is actually quite high, and uh, lots of variations. Um, but at the end, uh, what you get from Bitstream is that's actually what you see in the in the in the JPEG. Um, you know, if you look at the JPEG file, this actually is the Bitstream you're going to see for that particular block. All right. So you have all these tables that kind of have to uh, to reuse. Does it make sense? So for you, I suppose the takeaway is uh, to understand how, um, well, the, the, the first thing is, okay, the tricks that, uh, that JPEG has to do. So the fact that you use differential coding for the DC coefficient, the fact that you have the zigzag pattern, and the fact that you treat the zeros, uh, that you expect to have lots of zeros, so you use some uh, run length encoding system where you, you, you have special symbols to tell you how many zeros you have to come in your, in your, in your, um, in your, in your stream. All right? 